Good morning, everybody, and Foundations Church, and all those that may want to just click in and be with us today. It's not just unprecedented times that we're talking about. It's biblical things. Luke talks about plagues and talks about floods and earthquakes, and we're living in the last days, so we shouldn't be shocked when we see these things happen, but we definitely shouldn't fear. So we're coming to you today, and we're going to do the podcast so you could be with us, and uh, we're going to deliver the word and a short message to encourage you today to stand in faith, not fear, and just be a part. Stay in touch with your family members. Just text and call and keep in touch. And, um, but enjoy the message today, and we'll talk at you later. Shout praise to the Lord, everyone on this earth. Be joyful and sing as you come in to worship the King. As you come in to worship the King. You know the Lord is God. He created us. We belong to Him. We are His people. We are His sheep. We are His people. We are His sheep. Be thankful and praise as you enter his place. The Lord is good. He is faithful to all of our days. He is faithful to all of our days. Shout praise to the Lord, everyone on the earth. Be joyful and sing. As you come in to worship the King I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back Still I will follow Though none go with me Still I will follow Though none go with me Still I will follow No turning back 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 For at one time you were darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and all that is right and true, and tried and to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. <laughs> but when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will rise on you. The reading of the Lord. One, two, three, four. Suffer and serve it. Teach us to pour out. Show us scars so beautiful and overcome our doubt. And come, King of Sorrows, come with your crown of thorns. Come and teach us how to die. 
so we can be reborn. In Jesus, you're the suffering servant. In Jesus, you're the suffering king. In Jesus, you died once for all, and death has lost its sting. Burn us pure and clean Give us holy seeking hearts That only want one thing In Jesus you're the suffering servant In Jesus you're the suffering king In Jesus you died once for all Death has lost its sting And come enthroned in heaven With victory in your hands Let your mercies fall like rain Across the sand You're the suffering servant In Jesus you're the suffering king In Jesus you die once for all And death has lost its sting 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 Good morning, Foundations Church. Thanks for tuning in uh, live to our online stream here. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you today, turn to Psalm 23. That's where our sermon and exposition will be coming from. And if you don't have a Bible, I'm sure you probably have a smartphone or something laying around, uh, maybe an iPad or a tablet, something. Just pick it up and, and flip to that passage, Psalm 23. That is where we're going to start today. But before we do, let's just quickly pray. Uh, I know that these times are a little strange and these circumstances are a little strange. And in some way, shape, or form, I kind of feel like the Apostle Paul, like writing a letter, but instead a video letter to you uh, during this time period. And, and I, I just hope that it still reaches you uh, successfully. So let's just pray together and just be encouraged before we dive into the Word. Dear Lord, we give you thanks and glory this morning. We just ask that as everyone tunes into this video, uh, that they will be uplifted through the words of this psalm that they'll learn something about you and your character, Lord, that they'll see how you are the good shepherd, and that they'll lean onto those promises this morning, and they'll lean more into you through these tough times. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So if you have your Bibles with you, hopefully you're in Psalm 23. If not, we're going to read it anyway. <laughs> so, tune with me there. It begins, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. David was someone who knew a little bit about sheep. He was, after all, a shepherd before he became king. He grew up around a flock. He raised them, guided them, and provided for them. David, like many great musicians, was channeling his life experience in this psalm to convey something about the nature of God in whom he put his trust. We know that David didn't always have an easy life. 
He was blessed and consecrated by Samuel, but ultimately had to wait before becoming king. He had a strange and somewhat tumultuous relationship with King Saul. He spent some of his days in the king's court, soothing his soul with songs of praise. In another part of his time, he was on the run hiding in exile from death threats in a cave. David truly knew and understood what it meant to be both favored and a shut-in. In his well-documented moments of despair, he cried out to God, surrendering himself to the will of the Father. He put his total trust in the Lord's hands. He viewed God not just as an omniscient being, but as a personal shepherd who could lead him through times of darkness to greener pastures. Let us take a close look at David's psalm in our time of darkness. As the world around us seems to be in utter chaos, and we are exiled in our own caves, we can lean into the promises of this psalm to find true peace in God. Let's look at verse 1. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David, breaking away from the tradition of our Lord, claims God as his own. Or better yet, says that God claims him as his own. The Lord, Yahweh, is David's personal shepherd. While he looks over the entirety of the flock, David establishes that he also gives special attention and care to the individual. He sees us in both our time of despair and comfort and knows how to help accordingly. Because he is a personal shepherd, our personal shepherd, just like David, we have nothing to want for. If you know anything about sheep, they traditionally stay close to the flock, and more specifically, close to the shepherd. They're not generally known for going on their own way. If they do, it doesn't always end well. And because of this, they are aware of one thing, that the shepherd will provide for them. He will give them everything they could want and need. We are God's sheep. We are those that he provides for. If we trust in him, truly, truly trust in him, he will provide for us everything that we need. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. There's a passage where Jesus kind of illuminates this, if you will. It starts in verse 25. Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What we see here is that if we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, all of the necessary things will be provided for us by God. He will lead us through times of terror into greener pastures. If we flip back to Psalm 23, the next couple of verses will sort of illuminate exactly what God does for us. In verse 2 it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And so we know four things about God. First and foremost, He makes us lie down. He gives us much-needed rest. 
The second is that he leads us to still waters, places free of turmoil, places that have everything that we need, an ecosystem just for ourselves. The third is that he restores our souls. He comforts us in times of grief. He corrects us in times of sin. And he replenishes our spirit with his grace and his love. And the fourth thing is that he leads us in paths of righteousness. He gives us the means to follow his will, to follow his ways. He does so by becoming the good shepherd for us, by laying down his life for us. He leaves behind the safety of the flock to find the one. He leaves behind the 99 for you. And why does he do it? It says it in verse 3, he does it for his namesake. He created us. He wants to be with us. He wants to commune with us. He wants to show us love. He wants to shepherd us in the way that we should go. And so he does it for his own good and for his own glory. If we continue in verse 4, it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We have nothing to fear. And he leads us through sometimes through dangerous places, through turmoil. And his intention ultimately is to get us to that green pasture, that place where we are safe. So sometimes things may seem dark. Death may seem to be all around. But just remember that he's leading us to his place, to his home, to his kingdom, to his glory. His intention ultimately is to get us from point A to point B. And every now and then, he has to lead us through darkness. But we are not to fear any evil because he is with us. And he's carrying something with him, just like every good shepherd should. He has a rod and our staff. And those things are for our comfort, it says. But what is a rod or staff? It is an instrument that is intended to correct a wayward stray and bring them back. It's an instrument that stands tall to lead the flock in a procession. It's an instrument that also keeps out enemies. And so his rod and our staff covers us. It comforts us in these times. And he does this ultimately to bring us together to him. And we see this here in verse 6. It says, or sorry, verse 5, it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even in the midst of turmoil, he prepares a table for us and says, Come home. I want to dine with you. He's anointed us and called us sons and daughters, fellow heirs with Jesus. He's ready to dine and commune with us in his house, not temporarily, but forevermore. And he did all this by laying down his life so that we could be made right in his kingdom. In John chapter 10, he gives us a little bit more of this idea of being the good shepherd. Jesus takes it on himself. He says in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Jesus was given a command to take the role of the Good Shepherd, to bring home the flock, to bring home you, to bring home me, to guide us through turmoil and get us into his courts. And so we know that Jesus is our good shepherd. He knows you. He sought you. He laid down his life to bring you back into his fold. Even though we may be going through a dark time, we must remember that he has descended to the darkest depths of death to overcome it for us. No matter what toils, pestilence, famine, or persecution we face, he has already conquered it. Because of this, we should be anxious for nothing. 
We should count it all joy that the Lord of God is our shepherd. He is our guide, our helper, our corrector. Jesus told us in a parable separate from this one in Luke just how much he rejoices when he finds a sheep that is lost. It says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. No matter where you are today, I ask you to surrender yourself to Christ, to channel David in this moment. Picture yourself as David exiled in a cave, expecting death and putting all of your trust on God. I ask you to allow him to carry you on his shoulders home. He has promised us and he will truly bring us through the darkest of times. And for that, we must repent and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. For you were at one time in darkness, but now through Christ, you are light in the Lord. Let us rejoice in that this morning. Let us pray. We beg you, Lord, to help and defend us. Deliver the oppressed. Pity the insignificant. Raise the fallen. Show yourself to the needy. Heal the sick. Bring back those of your people who have gone astray. Feed the hungry. Lift up the weak. Take off the prisoners' chains. May every nation come to you. May come to know you. That you alone are God. That Jesus Christ is your child that we are your people, the sheep that you pasture. Amen. Peace and grace to you all. See you next week. Hey, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. This is the fourth week in Lent. We're glad that you were able to uh, click on and watch uh, the sermon and hear the word preached to you this week. If you found some value in this and you want to see more videos, uh, click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. And you can also visit us at ffichurch.com to find out more how you can give and donate and help us through this ministry. Um, those are just great links for you. Uh, we also set up a new one this week. It's called Common Prayer Daily, and it's a daily podcast that you can listen to uh, just with prayer going on. If you need prayer throughout this week, tune into that. So that's commonprayerdaily.com. Our website is ffichurch.com, and the best way to stay up to date is to hit the subscribe button below on the YouTube channel that you have right here. And if you do all that, you'll stay up to date and we'll see you next week. And if things change, which hopefully they do, we'll see you in person even sooner. Uh, Thanks for watching. Grace and peace to you all. And give God all praise and glory. Amen. Don't turn in bad